So we'll get started. Uh, good evening, everyone. Before we start, I'm going to ask that everyone please turn their cell phones on silent. <clears throat> Thank you. My name is Robin Booth, and I'm the worker safety rep for the Thompson Smelter, and I'll be the MC for this ceremony this evening. Every year, workers, families, employers, and communities come together to remember those who have lost their lives to work-related incidents and occupational disease. We also come to renew our commitment to creating a healthy and safe workplace. Please rise and join me in a moment of silence to remember those who have lost their lives. Thank you. Please be seated. I'd like to call upon uh, Tony Colburn, the worker safety rep for Birch Tree Mine, to read the names of the workers that we lost this year. Thank you, Tony. Uh, first, I'll read the names from uh, Manitoba. <coughs> Danielle Morin, 61. Joao Bernard, Bernardo, sorry, 74. Nasser Khan, 71. Gerard Goldenberg, 72. Gilbert Scarf, 71. Edmund Roy, 92. John Flood, 56. Johan Wolf, 69. Alberto Grosby, 59. Robert Nicholson, 63. Braxton Ducharme, 19. Dennis Gravel, 66. Roderick Qualchuk. Paul Truck, 68. Norm Rozier, 66. Robert Chuka, 44. Sophie Arisco, 66. Scott Bowman, 59. Bram Career, 28. Albert Fries, 79. Leonard Gilmore, 84. Riel Lamon, 66. Ernest Vivian, 74. <clears throat> and I'll read the names from uh, District 3. Thomas Chin, 50. Chad Wilcom, 29. Ian Lawson, 23. Oliver London, 57. And Gary Priest, 58. Thank you. Thank you, Tony. Uh, nextly, I'd like to invite Torrance Suckbeer up to share a prayer uh, with us. Thank you, Torrance. Let's bow our heads and pray. Dear Jesus, we thank you for this day. We thank you that 2,000 years ago, on that first Easter morning, you rose from the dead that we can have hope that we will rise someday. This day of mourning, we pray for all workers who were killed or injured in the workplace. We pray 
that you will comfort those that mourn today. We pray that you will continue to provide all their needs according to your riches. Dear God, I pray for our leaders. I pray that you will give them the courage to, to renew their commitment to achieve zero harm for your people. And I pray that as your minister come to minister your word, I pray that your word will be healing to our hearts. For we pray, pray in Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Torrance. Uh, Torrance is the worker safety rep for uh, shops and utilities at Ballet. Nextly, Blake Ellis uh, will share a few words on behalf of Mayor Dennis Fenske. Um, I, I bring greetings uh, from Mayor Dennis Fenske and, and the city of Thompson. Um, to hear the names that read out today of those that, that were lost, um, it's humbling. It's, uh, everyone expect, expects to, to, to leave home every day and when they go to work and be able to come home at the end of the day. And unfortunately, that's not always the case, even though we're very vigilant to make sure that that does happen, but unfortunately, it, sometimes it doesn't. And we must be vigilant to, to improve ourselves and, and or organizations so that workers do come home. I think at the, it's been a tough week at the city of Thompson this week. Um, unfortunately on the, this weekend, even though it wasn't a worker, uh, we did have a death at one of our, one of our city facilities and it was a seven year old child. And uh, I know it, it impacts everyone at the city, especially those that came in contact with that child, um, from, from the facility staff to um, people that, uh, to our, our fire and emergency services, to our RCMP. And uh, I think one, one, we always look at injuries in terms of uh, broken bones and, and, and uh, bruises. Um, I think one, one thing we need to look at is uh, our workers' mental health. Right? I think, you know, while bones and bruises can heal, um, sometimes the biggest impact is mental health. So, um, you know, it's, uh, it's humbling me to be here today. And uh, I, I just pray that, that uh, not, no, no, I, I know this won't be the case, but I just pray that, that others don't have to go through uh, to lose a loved one at the workplace, um, and uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you, Blake, for those heartfelt words. Uh, now we'll have a few words from Stacy Martin on behalf of MLA Kelly Bindle. Hi, I'm Stacy Martin. I'm be here on behalf of Kelly Bindle. Uh, so I'd like to start off by respectfully acknowledging that we are in Treaty 5 land, traditional NCN territory, homeland to the Métis people, and home to all of us residing here in the north and on behalf of the province. I want to welcome you, uh, all the elders and all the people coming for listening and sharing your experiences here today, and respecting and supporting those suffering as a result of a workplace injury. Even if we've never experienced a close call in our work, uh, but we've known a victim of a serious accident in cases that we know all someone who has. Uh, today is International Day of Mourning and remember those who are injured and killed at the job, suffering from occupational illnesses. Everyone at work expects to come home at the end of a, a shift and all remember the moments count uh, when you work safely uh, for ourselves, our co-workers, our friends and our family. Safety is the most important responsibility and requires uh, eternal vigilance to keeping first and foremost in our thoughts. Kelly has worked in a, in a third world area and he has seen firsthand results of the lack of knowledge uh, or ability for workers to, to recognize a dangerous situation or the lack of the worker's power. 
and to challenge, to, to challenge superiors in direct working dangerous situations, and it's not pretty, averaging at least one fatality per year. It costs a single company uh, the investigation, millions in investigation and loss of, of production. The only way to ensure that safety, safety for our workers is to educate them, educate our superiors, and educate the company <coughs> in however it benefits working them to achieve uh, zero harm. We have the advantage here in the north that we have safety programs in place supporting by governments and organization and labor to train and protect the workers and monitor and address deficiencies. We're all working hard towards the same goal of zero harm. It's not easy because it's never ending and dangerous ne danger never sleeps. If we don't get the data on accidents, it didn't happen. As a result of our efforts, there's a risk of becoming complacent. Today we more than family more in the family members, the friends and co-workers and others around us that in the world that suffer as a result of occupational injury. Remembering that we remind, that reminds us that we never need to stop uh, achieving for zero harm. Thank you. Thank you, Stacy. On behalf of uh, Nikki Ashton, we have Blair Hudson who will share a few words. Thank you. Nikki asked me, asked me to convey these words. Today as Canadians come together to remember and honour workers injured or killed in the job, we are reminded that we also have a duty to work towards preventing future accidents, illness and fatalities. Too many members are hurt, maimed or become ill because of their jobs. Some pay the ultimate price and never return home. 25 years ago, on May the 9th, 1992, an explosion in West Ray in Pictou County, Nova Scotia killed all 33 miners working underground. Des despite years of public in police investigation and public inquiries, no one was ultimately held responsible for the death of those workers. The steel workers worked tirelessly to seek justice for West Ray families, and in 2003, Parliament unanimously passed the Westray Law, which allowed for the prosecution of corporations for negligence leading to workplace deaths. Since then, there has only been a handful of charges and just one prison sent sentence resulting from the Westray Law, despite almost 1,000 workplace deaths every year. There will never be justice for all those families grieving for a loved one killed at work until workplace deaths are properly investigated, charges are laid, and those responsible prosecuted under the law. On the 25th anniversary of the Westbury disaster, we must continue to fight for the living. We must continue to support the labour movement and its fight to fight for safe workplaces. New Democrats are calling on the federal, provincial and territory governments to collaborate on, urgent act, on an urgent action plan to ensure better training and coordination for regulators, prosecutors and police, police under the Westray law. Canadian workers deserve protection on the job and their loved ones deserve justice. No one should die to make a living. Thank you. Thank you, Blair. Um, I will call upon Mark Scott to say a few words on behalf of Valley Manitoba. <clears throat> Thank you, Robin. It's an honour to be asked to speak at this solemn occasion. You know, I grew up in a mining household in a mining town, not this one, but a place called Bathurst, New Brunswick, and unfortunately, uh, like too many people in our industry, and I'm sure a lot of people in the room here tonight, uh, I know what it's like to lose a friend at work. and. I learned that lesson at a young age and that's why it's so, uh, it's always been so personally important to me uh, that we continue to improve our safety performance every year throughout our operations. Uh, and for the last 15 years that's meant here in Thompson. I'm extremely proud to say that uh, together with USW Local 6166, Valley's Manitoba Operations Safe Production Risk Management System has helped us achieve a 75% reduction in our total recordable injury frequency since 2010. And although uh, it hasn't always been the case, uh, I believe it is true today that we are safety leaders in a leading industry and that's because we work so closely together. Our challenge, of course, is that given the nature of the hazards inherent in the work we do every day, risk is ever present. It never takes a day off. It never has a momentary lapse in focus or judgment. It's always there. And it's up to each of us to make sure that we have the systems in place to manage risk to as low as reasonably achievable every day 
and that every one of our coworkers, friends, and neighbours understand what we expect of one another, that no measure of production is worth serious injury or death of any worker, and that every day we do everything humanly possible to look out and care for one another. That's what we strive for. Zero harm is our most important measure of success, and I'm proud to say that we're well on our way to achieving it together. The National Day of Mourning reminds us that of those who've gone before us, and it represents an opportunity to refresh and renew our diligence and our commitment to the achievement of zero harm in all places, in all workplaces, every day, for the folks in those workplaces and for their loved ones at home. And I know, uh, Les, you're going to be traveling to Stellarton next week for the West, West Ray anniversary, and uh, uh, you know, not just as a mining community, but as a maritimer, I hope you'll uh, convey our thoughts from Valet and, and everyone in Thompson and at Manitoba Operations to the folks in Nova Scotia on that, uh, on that anniversary. Uh, thank you all. Thank you, Mark. I'll call upon Les Ells Ellsworth, President of uh, Steelworkers Local 6166, to say a few words. First of all, it's good to see so many people out tonight. When I look around the room tonight, this is not a part of my speech, but it certainly causes me to stop for a moment. In this room, you may not be aware of it, I think there's nine full-time people from the steel workers. That's full-time, just nothing but safety, elk and environment. That's the importance that we have put on it. We've negotiated along with the former Inkle and Valet, and uh, that speaks volumes to uh, what we do in the workplace. And so the evening, I'd like to start out with good evening, sisters and brothers and honored guests. Welcome to our annual day of morning service. I'm honored and privileged to bring greetings on behalf of our members. This type of event does not take place without an organized team. Before I get into my message, I want to thank Brother uh, Perry Oxford, worker safety representative in the mail in the warehouse, Robin Boot, worker safety representative in the smelter, and Dale Breton, our administrative assistant, for coordinating this event. I would also like to thank Brother Robert Ellsworth, Environment Health Work Representative, and Tony Colburn, Worker Safety Representative at Birch Tree Mine, for coordinating the Safe Workers of Tomorrow program for the Frontier School Division. We have a long history of working together with Valet to ensure that our young people, in particularly the high school students, are presented the Safe Workers of Tomorrow program. This program is in, to ensure they understand their rights when they enter the workplace of their choice. The program has been supported both financially and with manpower in the past by our partners in safety, Valet. This program is currently presented by presenters from the Safe Workers of Tomorrow. They are to be commended for their foresight in supporting our young workers in this very important program. We have always believed this program to be the prevention plan for our young people before they become more heavily involved in various workplaces, both in and outside of Thompson. The stories we have heard over the years from our young people with regards to the tools they have, they have given, been given through this program have prevented injuries and in some cases, fatalities. We continue to present to the Frontier School Division throughout the year and we have seen many young people from Northern Manitoba employed by Valet in the last couple of years. Again, thank you to those who have helped make the Safe Workers of Tomorrow program what it is today. Since our last day of mourning, there has been several reported fatalities of young workers in this province. I don't know about you, when we talk about 19, 23, no one should die. These are pretty young. Despite this, I believe we're making a difference in our high school education program. A special thank you to Gordon Med, our Medwit, our Vice President and Divisional Environment, Health and Safety Chair for the USW 6166 for his commitment, along with our full-time worker safety representatives and activists who help bring our members home to their families at the end of the workday. Thank you to our union leadership as well, because we do not only help out members in our own union, but many within this city who come to us for information or guidance. Just this last week, we were called upon to help with a tragedy in our city, and without hesitation, our union rose to the challenge. It is obvious to me and others who live in Thompson, there are a lot of workplaces that have little or no understanding of the employer's role and responsibilities under legislation. I do not believe any employer in Thompson would purposely ignore the law. Consequently, they're putting themselves at risk. We need to do more as government, 
unions and employers. Our goal is zero harm. Thank you for joining us in honoring those who have been injured or killed in the workplace. To the guests who have addressed this service and those who send regrets on behalf of the executive committee and members of United Steelworkers Local 6166, a heartfelt thank you for your support. I will also take this opportunity to recognize our partners in environment, health and safety, Valet, Mark Scott, Vice President of the Manitoba Operations, I appreciate your kind remarks. Kirk Regler, who couldn't be here tonight, and I think he was very sad that he couldn't be. He was on business. He's the manager of training, safety, and health and environment. For your continued support, it is greatly appreciated. Thank you to Councilor Blake Ellis on behalf of the city of Thompson for the kind and supportive remarks. Blair Hudson, representing our MP Nikki Ashton and Pastor Dan Murphy of the Thompson Pentecostal Church for the message that is going to come and the prayer for all workers I'm sure you're going to share. Thank you also to Stacy for filling in for Kelly Bendel, MLA, for being here this evening. I would also like to thank the RCMP for representing the men and women who continually put their lives on the line to protect citizens in this, citizens in this country. I would also like to recognize our Thompson Emergency Services, Fire and Ambulance, for our dedication to all citizens and workers of this great community. Every year we com commemorate April the 28th as a day to remember those who have been killed or have died from occupational diseases. For many of us, it is a very personal experience. It could be someone we, have worked, we may have worked with or someone we have, may have known who was killed at work. I have always had a personal interest in safety because of tragedies in my own family. I felt betrayed as a young man and I know the pain and suffering the family goes through when they lose a loved one. And for those that know me, you've heard my story. I lost an 18 year old brother in a family truck, a faulty tire, back in 1978. Never forget that night, my family was thrown into mourning at first and rage at last. But because of a lack of funding, no insurance, no union, our family wasn't able to do anything. Three and a half years later, my father, who was trying to make a living, as a fisherman was drowned in the Atlantic Ocean at 55. Do I know? Yes, I do. And that's why I dedicated most of my life, since I've been implied by the former Inkland Valet, is to bring people home at the end of the day. Chances are if an accident or a close call has not happened to you directly, then you know someone for whom it has. An accident at work can happen to any of us, and the effects can be devastating. The price to pay in suffering, change of work, and lifestyle is enormous. Commemoration is important. It reminds us of our efforts to work safely and to encourage our employers to make work safe, safer as a deeper meaning. It was the late Dick Martin, steelworker and past president of Local 6166, who eventually became the president of the Manitoba Federation of Labor and secretary treasurer of the Canadian Labor Congress, who first suggested to Rod Murphy, a former MP, to prepare a private member's bill on what became the day of mourning for workers killed or injured while working. The bill, which eventually became law 26 years ago, also recognized those who would suffer long-term effects from diseases caused by harmful chemicals, etc., in the workplace. Statistics says that more than, more than 2,000 people die every year in Canada from diseases caused by exposure to asbestos. It is the number one cause of occupational disease in Canada. It is not a moment just to remember. As important as that is, it is a moment to remind us the struggle continues. The fight remains, and most importantly, education is what today is all about. Many of our existing health and safety laws are only here because someone died. And someone else fought to ensure it won't happen again. We can't stop fighting for safer workplaces. Tonight, remember our history well. This year has been pointed out by Blair's the 25th anniversary of the Wistra explosion. On May 9, 1992, an explosion at the Wistray Mine in Pekna County, Nova Scotia killed all 26 miners working underground that fateful morning. It was one of the worst cases of employer negligence in Canadian history and led to new criminal code provisions known as the Wistray Law that finally made it possible to prosecute corporate criminal negligence. When criminal negligence results in a worker's death, it is a crime, not an accident. But many workplace fatalities are still never properly investigated, and only a handful of investigations have resulted in criminal charges. This must change. Production can never be 
never be put before someone's safety at work. Steelworkers fought for and won the right to participate, no one to refuse. We fought for the Westray Law, known as Bill C-45, and we are continuing to fight and lobby all levels of government to stop the killing, enforce the law. Those laws are not only for our members, but all workers in Canada. In our local unions, our members have fought and won many rights to protect our members and made our workplaces much safer than before. We know accidents can and will happen in our type of work. However, we must acknowledge our mistakes and put safeguards in place to make sure it never happens again. We must continue as two organizations, Valet and U.S. W. Local 6166, who I represent tonight, to be committed towards a safer and a healthier workplace for all. In 2016, there were five reported USW District 3 members killed on the job in Canada, and three more just recently, April 20, 20, 2017, in British Columbia in the sawmill industry. In Manitoba alone, there have been 22 workers killed on the job since April 28, 2016. In Canada, roughly 1,000 workers die every year because of something that happened to them at work, and thousands more are seriously injured. I believe there's a tremendous amount of pressure on the workplace with regards to work overload, the uncertainty, if there will be a job there tomorrow or not because of the tremendous downturn in the economy. More than ever, we need to strive to ensure our members come home safely at the end of the workday. Today I received an email, it's news across Canada yesterday, the Government of Canada made a statement in the regards to the 25th anniversary of Westray, that the laws will be stronger than ever. There will be tougher penalties, and people will go to jail if they kill a worker. As Mark pointed out, I will go travel down to, to Pitney County, Nova Scotia, and celebrate for, with the people down there and remember that time. And for those that don't know, I was one of the first lobbyists in Canada, along with 13 other steel workers in 2000, that started lobbying for the Westray Bill. I mentioned this there just this week. One of the members of that group was a man that had gone into Westray. He went in because he was into the recovery now. Not one body alive came out. In fact, I believe it was 11 still into the ground there. That man was perfectly healthy. Blake, you mentioned it earlier in your speech. Mentally, he has never returned to work. When they went in there, it was bodies no more, and I will say no more about that. It changed his lifetime. Everything is family. I watched that man cry at many conventions. Workplace accidents changes all of us, especially the families that suffers from day to day for a lifetime. So tonight in closing, our union is committed to concrete action to protect the health, safety, and environment of our members and of all workers. And when I say all workers, it's not just the 1,200 people that I represent at Valet, GDI, Garda, Calmere. We have an interest in everybody. If GM McKay called us today and said there was a tragedy, can you help? We would help. Because we don't want it to happen to anyone. And as I look tonight over at this plaque, there's a lot of names there of people that died while they mined nickel at Inco and Nell Valet, we don't want to have no more names. And as partners with Valet, that is our goal, never to do that again. We can make a difference at work, in the community and in the legislature. I would hope, I would hope, with the new change of governments, we continue to improve the laws, not weaken them. Let us commit ourselves to do everything we can towards to work towards zero workplace injuries and fatalities. Let's continue to mourn the dead, but fight for the living. Thank you. Thank you, Les. Lastly, I'd like to invite Reverend Dan Murphy to say a devotional. I want to say thank you for the opportunity to be here tonight and to uh, share 
uh, a few thoughts and some scripture as well. Today is a solemn day, uh, for we reflect on those who have lost their lives in their places of work or have been injured as well. It's about the tragedy of life, an unexpected loss of life. Though much has been done uh, and efforts made to minimize and eliminate it, tragedy still happens, and we hear about that even tonight. When the news comes, it's always a shock. I'm reminded of even Jesus when he came to Mary and Martha's home and Lazarus had died and Jesus said, oh, he's not going to die, he's just sick, whatever. And by the time he got there, he had already died and was already dead for four days. And as each of Lazarus' uh, sisters came to him, they said, if you had have only been here, if you had have just been here, our brother would still be alive. The shock and the, 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 the emotion was still real and raw on them. I want to read a portion of scripture, though, that reminds us of our mortality because I think a day like this reminds us of that. Psalm 39, verses 4 to 7 says this, Show me, O Lord, my life's end. And the number of my days. Let me know how fleeting is my life. For you, you have made my days a mere hand breath. The span of my years is as nothing before you. Each man's life is but a breath. Surely everyone goes around like a mere phantom. In vain they rush about, heaping up wealth without knowing whose it will be, will finally be. But now, Lord, what do I look for? My hope is in you. We never expect to get that call. Someone showing up at our door. We live our lives with the sense of routine and longevity in mind. But unfortunately, that is not always the case. I know in my own life as a pastor, I have been part of many calls that have changed people's lives forever. In a moment, someone's life is turned upside down. A family is torn apart. A tragedy has taken place, and the home will never be the same, nor will the workplace. I still remember the day that I was enjoying life and I was simply out fishing with a friend only to arrive home to the news a close friend and a member of my congregation had a, experienced a workplace accident that claimed his life. We were stricken with grief, a sense of loss, a sense of disbelief going to his home and being with his wife and, and their newly born daughter, it was difficult. Words were not enough. Nothing could take away the pain and the anguish. The struggle and the, the, the wonder of what would take place now. This was not how that day was supposed to end. This was not how their family's life was supposed to be. You see, when we go off to work, we just expect to come back home. But for far too many, this is not what happens. We live with a sense of security, which makes our workplace accident and death all the more traumatic. We just have a sense, oftentimes as we live our lives, that there's always tomorrow. We will always come back home. Great efforts are being made and that's wonderful and we're excited about that and, and things have changed so much over the years. Life is more precious and valuable and that is really at the heart of it all. The value and, and, and honor of a single life. 
I just can't imagine living even a hundred years ago when human life just seemed to be a little cheaper in most people's minds. Over a thousand Chinese people lost their lives simply building our railroad. That would just be an atrocity today. My son was just in China and, and was at the, 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 the Great Wall of China, a marvel, and there's pictures of it, and everyone is just amazed at it. It is an amazing thing, but it's also known as the largest cemetery in the world. For over a million people gave their lives to construct that. It's days like this that should not only remind us of the brevity of life, but also of the value of it and the preciousness of it and how we need to be thankful and, and give God thanks and praise for the breath that we have in our lungs at the end of each day and at the beginning of each day because we never know if today is going to be our last. But we also should be thankful when we do return home to our families at the end of each shift. And each one of us here perhaps was at work today and we're home and that's wonderful. But there are others that are now in a hospital or grieving, even tonight. And those are the people that we need to honor and remember as well tonight. Amen. Thank you, Dan. Thank you, everyone, for taking the time out of your evening to come to our ceremony this evening. Um, there will be refreshments served afterwards if you'd like to stick around. And that closes the ceremony for tonight. Thanks again. Can we just stand? Lord God, we thank you that you have spoken in your word about the sanctity and the preciousness and the value of life. Your word says a man doesn't hate his life, but loves it and cherishes it. And so, God, we thank you for the efforts and, and the, 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 the programs and the, the, the plans that are in place to to keep people safe at work, yet we still see tragedy. We still suffer injury. And so, God, we pray that you would be with those tonight. Though, the, though oftentimes we, when something happens, we, we turn our focus and our attention on what can we do to prevent this. And those that are grieving and injured seem to be overlooked or forgotten. And so, God, we thank you that tonight we have the opportunity once again to lift them before you, to pray for them, to express our concern and our value for them. And, Lord, I pray that you would wrap your arms of love and care around them, those that are grieving, that you would bring comfort, those that are are, are, have been injured, that you would bring healing and health back to them. Those that are struggling even mentally, oh God, that you would bring your peace into their life. Lord God, would you become a, a source of strength and support to them. And may they find in you a refuge. And may we continue to, to work hard at seeing each person Come home safe, for I ask it in Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, everyone, once again. Uh, feel free to stick around for a bit. Or